on that note, I think we're ready to begin. So thank you for joining us. Um, please make welcome my colleague hiding behind that gush of pink on your screen, Joyce DeCuna. Joyce is back and ready to take carry on that bandwagon of hers as we explore speaking and listening for young learners in grade two of the graded exams in spoken English. Uh, please enjoy. I will come back um, towards the end to help link up all the questions and the answers. Joyce, good afternoon. You're looking very lovely today. Good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> so um, let's go. I think we're ready to begin. Thank you so much. Hello, teachers. It's so good to be back with you once again. Thank you very much for that outpouring of appreciation in your feedback. It's my desire to inspire you to create more and more innovative activities and techniques. I like the spark. You create the bonfire. Okay, so are we ready to go? Yeah. Today we are going to be focusing on the Jesse Grade 2 examination. And you will notice that the Lexus is a very limited amount. We've got to discuss only on rooms in the house, household objects, family and friends, pets, possessions, days of the week, months of the very simple topics. And yet, I have used these topics to develop the different language functions and the grammar requirements. You will observe the gradual rise in complexity of the tasks from Jesse grade one to Jesse grade two. The children are expected to give more extensions and exhibit a greater use of language. You'll notice this as we go along. Okay, now, what time of day is it? Is it breakfast time, lunch time, tea time, or supper time? Yes, I can hear someone say it's tea time. Yes, very good, it's tea time. Well, you're all welcome to my home for tea today. Welcome. But since it's the lockdown, we'll have a virtual trip to my home. Is that okay with all of you? No, I open my, you're all at my front door. I open my door and you enter my living room. Make yourselves comfortable, please. Sit around the place, wherever you can find place. If you don't have a seat, you can squat on the carpet. Just make yourselves comfortable. You are in my living room now. Vijayata Dave, where are you sitting? Are you sitting on the sofa? Is it your sofa? And Vijayata will say, no, it isn't mine. It's yours. Now notice what I'm trying to get her to do. I'm trying to get her to use the possessive pronouns. Nipa Shah, what color is the upholstery? Can you tell me the color of the upholstery? And what about Bina? Have you got a sofa in your house? In which room is it? I'm, I'm, I want you to answer in your own little way. I can't hear your answers, but I can imagine what you're saying. Anil Kumar, what can you see in the center of my living room? What's on it? Have a good look. Have you got a center table in your house? In which room have you put it? Mavis, what do you keep on your center table? And let me hear from Mithala, Mithali Bhattacharya. Do you like my cushions? What color are they? How many cushions can you see? So Mithali will have to sit and count the cushions and tell me how many cushions she can see. And Sumitra, have you got cushions in your house? Where are they kept? And Mina de Costa, are there curtains in, in your house? Where are they kept? Do you have them in your living room or your bedroom? Can you see any curtains in my living room? 
What color are they? And Rima was, you must be anxiously waiting for the tea and snacks I promised. What snacks do you want? Which room shall we go to next to have the snacks? There you are. You're right there in my dining room. There are a few chairs, no doubt, but it's okay. We can go and get chairs from the other rooms and make yourselves comfortable. And we have Muhammad Asif. What can you see on my dining table? Have a good look. There are very interesting things there. And Savita Bhatia, how many chairs are there around the table? Have you got a dining table in your dining room? Are there some chairs around it? How many chairs are there? And Nirmala, what about you? Tell me about your favorite room. In this manner, I have personalized my activity. It must have excited you a bit and also kept you alert, lest I ask you what you can see. This is how we keep the children alert. Involve them. Call out their names. I've got them to use all the language functions listed on the screen. That's why I put them there. All you need to do is ask relevant questions. You noticed the way I was asking the questions, automatically I got the, the answer I was looking for. In other words, they were using the functions, the grammar functions that were required. Then another thing, it's important to teach them the names of the rooms. Very often children say, I have a big hole. You don't say a big hole. I know they're trying to say hall, but even that is not correct. We say, I have a living room and a bedroom, not a bad room. That pronunciation is very important. The whole meaning changes if you say bad room. It's not a bad room. It's a bedroom. So here's where you might think, oh, this topic is so simple. They already know the names of the rooms. Please stress on the right pronunciation, the right names. And then we go on to talk about the different items in the room. We will have a lot of activities to encourage them to talk about the different items in the room. So now we look at this room. This room is a bedroom. It's a mess. What's wrong? Can you help me tidy it up? Liji Joy? You can see the trousers lying on the bed. Where will you put them? So now Liji has to understand that yes, the trousers are not supposed to be thrown on the bed there. So where has she to put them? She has to know the name of the word of the item wardrobe. We put the trousers in the wardrobe. Jaya Saju, can you see the headphones? Where are they? Where do you need to keep them? Rinku, where's the book? Where do you keep it? Rajni, please point to the boots. Are they in the right place? Where will you keep them? In this manner, we are getting them to observe. We are getting them to think. We are getting them to use the right vocabulary. Now, if they don't use the right words, you give them the vocabulary. But I have created a scene in such a way that it provokes them to speak. Now, let's look at the next scene where, again, we are going to teach them about the different things in the room. Here we have a box. Here we have a box, and in that box we can put different items. You know, you get a lot of toys with kitchen toys and uh, household items and all like little miniature ones. You can put those in, or you can just put a picture in. Now they will sing. The whole class has to sing to the tune of bits of paper. Pick and save, pick 
can say. What have you got? What have you got? Now, Rajit Kumar will pick a mixer. So what will Rajit Kumar say? I have a mixer. The moment he says, I have a mixer, the rest of the class will say, where do you find it? Where do you find it? And then Rajat, Raj, Rajit Kumar will say, in the kitchen, on the shelf. Then the next child. Now, if you have this um, online class, it's okay. I told you last time how you can solve this problem. Teacher calls out a name just the way I called out the name of one of you. Rajit Kumar must be really on his toes now. My God, she's called out my name. I've picked up a mixer. You call out the child's name. You pick the item from the box on behalf of the child. The whole class will sing. The whole group of children will sing. But when it comes to his part, he will say the name of the item that he's picked. And that's not enough. He has to tell me in which room you find it. And he has to also tell me where he finds it. So you see how many, how many requirements I'm fulfilling with that one sentence. And they love this. They love this. So I have, I have put in a few pictures there. But in your box, if you don't have the actual item, put pictures. No problem. But get the children to speak. Now, another topic here for this, uh, for this grade is my family. Now, we fall into the trap of saying, okay, uh, how many members are there in your family? Father, mother, brother, sister. It's, it's played out. They already know that. We want them to speak. We want them to speak. Uh, look at the picture. Indicate the position of people and objects in, on, under, between, next to. Describe the people and places. Use the present, present simple tense the present continuous tense and possessive pronouns. Okay, so now here I'm choosing Vanessa. So Vanessa, get ready. And now everybody will sing. Where? Now Mary had a little lamp. Where is daddy? Tell us now, tell us now, tell us now. Where is daddy? Tell us now. Now Vanessa will say, He's in the living room. So we've got the name of the room. Then, what's he doing? Tell us now, tell us now, tell us now. What's he doing? Tell us now. He's sitting on the sofa. You see, she's using the present continuous tense. He's using prepositions and the pronouns. He. Now, if I ask Shaitali, where is mommy? Tell us now, tell us now, tell us now. Where is mommy? Tell us now. What will uh, Shaitali say? She, because mommy is a female, a lady. She's, she's in the living room. What's she doing? Tell us now, tell us now, tell us now. What's she doing? Tell us now. She's playing with her son. You see, her is coming there. So when it comes naturally in a song, they pick it up much faster. I don't want to linger on this. You've understood the activity. Go ahead and call out names of children and do it for all the different rooms. I've done it only for one room. Do it for every room. So the children are using the name of the room. They're using the items that are found in the room. And they're also using their prepositions. Now, this is a very nice uh, song, The Farmers in the Dell. Ravni Tarora, you're going to be singing it alone. And then the whole chorus sings it only after you finish. Okay? In my living room, in my living room, I have a television. Sofas and a center table. This is what I have in my living room. Got it? Then the whole class will sing together in his living room. In his living room. He has. So now what's happening? The whole class is getting a chance to say all those things that he has in his living room. And then this is what he has in his living room. 
You notice when we say I, we said have. But when we say his, he, we said has. Okay? So this is something we can't teach them rules of grammar. But while singing, it comes naturally. Now, Parul Metta. You will talk, sing about in my bedroom. She has to sing it alone. Why? Because she has to tell us what she has in her bedroom. So she'll sing in my bedroom. Parul, I hope you're singing wherever you are. In my bedroom, I have a bed, a lamp on a side table, and beautiful curtains. This is what I have in my bedroom. And then the whole class in her bedroom, in her bed, like that, in that manner. Then Harleen call. I know you're a good cook, so you will talk about your kitchen. You'll sing about in my kitchen, what you have in your kitchen. So in this manner, the children, we, we generally put a tune to it because then they feel more comfortable using language. But in this manner, they're learning the different things that you find in each room. Please teach them the right words, like things in the kitchen. They don't know names like ladle and spatula and the names of the different pans. So you get an opportunity to teach them this. When they're little, it's better that they learn all these things. Now, this is a very exciting activity and something new. I'm sure none of you have done it before. In this activity, the teacher will ask a question, okay? The child has to give the answer. Once the child has given the answer, she has to add a, sent a sentence to it. After that, she has to ask a question to the next child. We have a trial here. Doris Parton, are you ready? Doris, what have you got in your kitchen? A Doris Parton will say, in my kitchen, I have a gas stove. So that's her answer. Now, what is she to do? She has to add. So she will say, mother cooks food here. So she has added. What's next? She has to ask a question. So she'll say, what do you have in your bedroom, Major Bean? So Major Bean will say, in my bedroom, I have a bed. What's that? That's her answer. Now she has to add to it. I sleep on it. And then she has to ask a question. What do you have in your dining room, Grishma? So Grishma continues in a similar manner. She will ask the question. The child will answer, has to add and ask another question to the next child. This is a fantastic activity. Now you'll notice when they are little, they can't do it in grade one. But grade two, we are pushing them to think. It takes a little time for them to understand this game. But once they get it, they have to think and enjoy the game. They will really enjoy it. Now, our topic here is on pets. And generally, what do we do? We talk about pets. Okay, what's your pet? What pet have you got? Tell me something about your pet. And invariably, the children say, we have no pet. Because first of all, they have no place in their homes to keep animals. There's just about enough room for them to live in that house. So how do they have pets? But today, today, it's, there's a slight twist to it. Okay? In this story about pets, I will guide them to use these grammar functions and a very important factor about my story today is social awareness, as well as developing attitudes and values. I'm not just going to talk about pets in general. Now, the punchline is very important. As I told you last time in the story, every story has a punchline. But the, it's different each time. Now, for this story, the punchline has a strong message. Toby, my Toby, I love you very much. Encourage the children to say this sentence with feeling. There's a strong message here. They must say it with feeling. This dog is not a cute, cuddly little Pomeranian. No. 
the dog in my story is a stray dog. He's garbage from the dustbin. He lives on the road. Yet, we need to love and care for all creatures. Most children are not going to like it. But if they say this punchline, the more you say it, and the thing, you begin to believe it. It's our duty as teachers to teach them, irrespective of what they look like or what their condition, what condition they are in, they are all God's creation. So let's hear about Sakshi and her dog Toby. Sakshi has a great message for all of us today. Sakshi is a little girl who has many friends in school. She's a lovely girl. All the children love her. Sakshi is a kind and happy child. One day after school, when Sakshi was going home, she saw some naughty boys throwing stones at a dog. Sakshi ran to save the dog and said, Don't do this. How can you be so bad? He has no home. Where can he go? He lives on the road. At night, he sleeps next to the dustbin. I, I want you to observe the prepositions I'm using. I put them in on purpose. So the boys listened to her and they stopped throwing stones. Sakshi saw that the dog was hungry. So she told her mother to put extra food in her tiffin box. Every day, she shared her tiffin with the dog. She called him Toby. Come on, everybody. Toby, my Toby. I love you very much. One day, she quietly brought Toby home and put him under the table, so much like other children. She said, sit here quietly. Then she said, Toby, my Toby, I love you very much. Come on, everybody together. Toby, my Toby, I love you very much. He's so dirty. He's full of ticks. He's not had a bath in years. But she's saying, I love you very much. In the evening, she put him in a tub and gave him a good scrub, gave him a bath. Just then, her mother saw her doing this. She shouted at Sakshi and said, Who told you to bring this dog into the house? He is a stray dog. He is so dirty. How can we keep him in the house? He's so thin and weak. I think he's sick. Send him out just now. So Sakshi sadly said, Toby, please go out. My mother doesn't want you here. So Toby sat at the gate. Then Sakshi said, Toby, and everybody is a joiner. Toby, my Toby, I love you very much. And Sakshi's father came home. He saw Toby sitting at the gate. And he said, bring Toby in. We can keep him as a pet for Sakshi. We must help him. He needs our love and care. And so Toby was allowed to stay in Sakshi's house as her pet dog. Sakshi said, Toby, my Toby, I love you very much. By now, even all the children have begun to love Toby. They got a little kennel for him to sleep at night. The next day, Sakshi's father made an appointment with the veterinary doctor. Now, here comes an important factor. We teach children that there are special doctors for animals. They took him there and got him treated. Now, see, we have to give a strong message here. You can't just bring a stray dog and keep him in your house and feel very safe. No, there's a procedure. 
So here's where you can discuss the procedure. Sakshi and her family have a pets family. They were so excited and even of course mother had no choice but to join in the game. They decided to have a pets party. So Sakshi called all her friends along with their pets for the party. What a fantastic party. You can imagine the din, the commotion there must have been there. You want to have a look at the room? There you are. There they are. They all come along with their pets. So you can have a little picture discussion on this picture. You can talk about the different pets. Let the children talk about their pets also. Then talk about what food they eat. So it's important to know what food each one eats. And here, this is a rare animal here, the alpaca. I knew that many children wouldn't know about it. And so I put it there. Then you can have a little discussion about the alpaca and how they use his wool. So such a sweet child. Look at the way she's cuddling that alpaca. So let the children discuss about the picture, what they see in this picture. Now, mother prepared a lovely meat cake because it was Toby's party after all. She prepared a meat cake and had lovely juicy bones for him. She also prepared some lovely snacks for the children. But what about their pets? Can their pets eat juicy bones? Chewy bones? Okay, so the next, the next, uh, activity will show you what each pet wants to eat. Now Prajakta has come with her dog. She was the happiest because there was plenty of food for her dog. I have a dog and he eats chewy bones, eats chewy bones, eats chewy bones. I have a dog and he eats chewy bones and he wags his tail like this. And then Yunus Ibrahim was very worried. He says, my rabbit can't eat chewy bones. So he sang, I have a rabbit and she eats juicy carrots, eats juicy carrots, eats juicy carrots. I have a rabbit and she eats juicy carrots. She hops about like this. And then Monica was looking very worried, scratching her head, saying, oh my goodness, my cat can't eat juicy carrots. So then what does your cat eat? So she starts singing. I have a cat and she eats fresh fish. Eats fresh fish. Eats fresh fish. I have a cat and she eats fresh fish. She licks her paws like this. And then comes Revati. Revati has her wonderful parrot. He's a very, very, very friendly parrot and smart guy. So she sings. I have, and she was a smart one. She carried the red chilies around. Along, she was afraid maybe that uh, Sakshi may not have red chilies in her house. So she brought her red chilies along with her, and she sang. I have a parrot, and he eats red chilies. Eats red chilies. Eats red chilies. I have. A parrot and he eats red chilies. He loves to talk like this. Pretty Polly, Polly dear, Polly wants a bottle of beer. Did you enjoy the song? Now, I have only four animals showcased here. You can have many more because we can't go on and on with the webinar. There's a time limit for the webinar. So I have only this many. You add your verses. And whatever food that animal eats. So indirectly, you're teaching them general knowledge as well. But how? Along with language functions. And look at the amount of language they have learned over here. It's marvelous. It's really fantastic to see that. And you notice I have chosen very common tunes like Mary Had a Little Lamb, The Farmers in the Dell, then Bits of Paper, simple tunes. And don't go on to choose very fancy songs and very uh, fancy tunes. Now, the children feel intimidated. If they can't sing it, they feel intimidated. Even teachers feel intimidated because most teachers, they feel that they can't sing. After all, you have a teacher's throat talking all the time. That's what happened to mine. Okay. Now, here, 
Our next topic is about friends. Now, what do we generally do when we have to talk about friends? Tell me about your friend. Say five sentences on your friend. And invariably, everybody's friend is very beautiful. Everybody's friend is tall and pretty and lo lovely hair, lovely long hair. And everybody's friend is very good. No, this is not what we want. As I told you earlier, attitudes and values, social awareness and attitudes and values. This is important. This is important. So here we have a picture. Look at the first picture. What do you think they will say? Now, the children have to tell us what you're going to say to that child. Stop pushing him. Share your toys. Look at the next picture. What will they say to this girl? Stop making her cry. Stop. Why, are you, why is she crying? Stop making her cry. Share your toys. And the next picture, stop grabbing. Share your toys. So here the children are learning voice modulation because when they're giving a command, they have to be very firm. Stop grabbing. Share your toys. So you're giving them a message. There's a strong message coming through in every activity that I show you. And then, of course, the next, uh, the next few pictures are very common. They talk about friends. So let them also talk about how they spend their time with their friends. And this child has got a new rocking horse. So he's sharing, uh, taking his friend for a ride on his new rocking horse. So this is what we have to teach our children. Share what you have. Not enough if you say, I have a best friend. No. What are you going to do for that best friend? I play with her. No. What else? How are you going to make your friend happy? Now, once again, I have the AAA technique for possessions. Now, for possessions, we want to ask them what they have. Now, this triple technique is a very nice uh, technique because teacher will ask a question, the child will answer, add, and ask. Okay, that's why it's called AAA. So I will, I will start. Lata, have you got a bicycle? Lata will answer, yes, I have a bicycle. Now what has she to do? She has to add. I ride my bicycle every evening. Next, what has she to do? She has to ask a question. Shika, what's your favorite toy? And Shika will answer, my favorite toy is my Barbie doll. And she will add, my mother gave it to me for my birthday. And she will ask, Clifford, have you got a Barbie doll? Well, Clifford is a little shocked. How can I have a Barbie doll? No, no, I don't have a Barbie doll, he says. No, that's not enough. He has to add to it, no? And he says, I have a remote controlled car and I play with it every day. Then he has to ask. So then he will ask another child a question. So it goes on like that. I've given you an example so that you understand that the, the teacher begins by asking the first child and then it continues. Ask, add, answer. Ask, add, sorry. Answer, add, ask. Answer, add, ask. So that ad is what they find difficult. They can answer. Now, what are we teaching them here? First of all, we're teaching them how to answer a question. Secondly, for the ad, we're teaching them to give extensions. That is so important. Very often I ask somebody, where did you go for your holiday? Delhi. What did you do yesterday? Played. That's not conversation. They must learn to give extensions. And then we also teach them how to ask questions. So this is a fantastic activity. It's really fantastic. You, I have used it for the topic possessions. You can use it for any topic. All the techniques that I'm using today can be used for any topic. Now here. I want them to use the present continuous tense. So again, I've got a picture like this, spot the difference. So we have, Rito is playing the violin. 
but Sharon isn't. She's painting. Now I'm teaching them to use contractions. But that's a very important part of conversational English. So once again, Ritu is playing the violin, but Sharon isn't. She's painting. Bharti is crying, but Ashok isn't. He's laughing. And look at the cutie there. Kavita is dancing, but Subodh Kumar isn't. He's singing. And Jiju Paul is kicking a ball. But Shweta isn't. She is skipping. See how many contractions I have used in the process? And now finally we have a picture as a recap. Always do that. This picture offers you an opportunity to revise all the concepts that I have taught you till now, or the lexis, the language functions, as well as the grammar functions. So now what do you do? So we do it like this. Shiba Shankar and her family have gone to the beach for a picnic. Now, how many members in Shiba Shankar's family? Suppose she says five. So you get a group of five children to be Shiba Shankar's family. Then get another group of another five children or maybe six children. Maybe the grandparents are living with them. So maybe they'll have eight in a family. So form them into groups and each family gives their family a name. Okay. And then they will identify with the picture and talk about what they do at the picnic. Now, maybe Shiba Shankar has gone to the beach for a picnic. The next family need not necessarily go to the beach. So when she has finished telling us what she did at the beach after having a picture talk here, so she gets some ideas, then the next family comes up and they will tell us where they went for their picnic and what they did at the picnic. And while telling us all that, they are indirectly using all the grammar functions that they have been taught. I hope I hope uh, I have been able to uh, excite you enough to create more activities. Because as I started my session today, I want to inspire you. I'm not going to teach you how to teach. All of you are experienced teachers. I need to inspire you to grow. So to create more activities based on what I have taught you. Thank you very much.